I'm Laura Reznikov, and I manage Intel's render kernel libraries. Um, so libraries you may have heard of, Embry, Open Image to Noise, Open Volume Kernel Library, and our latest Open Path Guiding Libraries. Um, so today I'm here to talk to you about two of those. Show of hands, who's heard of Embry? Used Embry? Awesome, yes. How about Open Image to Noise? Also good, nice. Well, I have some good news for you today. So I've seen online a little bit of like, hey, I haven't heard from Render Toolkit in a while. What are they up to? Are they dead? Guess what? We're not dead. Um, we've just been very, very busy doing our GPU ports, and we want to think about them and design them right so we don't disturb the AIs, APIs you're used to. So the first two we're releasing is Embry for ray tracing and open image denoise for your frame denoising. So our goal in doing these ports was to bring cross architecture, cross vendor support to our rendering libraries, but we wanted to maintain the quality, performance, and ease of use our users already enjoy. So how did we do that? We did this through Sickle. So Sickle is a royalty-free, cross-platform abstraction layer that enabled us to code for heterogeneous and offload processors um, using a modern C++. So this gave, gave us APIs and abstractions to find any device we wanted. So that's our CPUs, our GPUs, FPGAs. Um, so we can execute our code anywhere there and also manage our resources and our code execution. Um, it's part of Kronos, so check it out on Kronos if you'd like to know more. There's plenty of tutorials, um, either through Intel's website or Kronos. So I'm sure this is a little bit of an eye chart, um, but this is kind of the branching tree of Sickle. So Sickle is part of Kronos, but then there's each one of these flavors. So since I'm with Intel, we're gonna go down the Intel branch here under what we call one API. So one API, write once ideally, and use the same API to send to your other Sickle devices. So this is done through DPC++, um, or what we call data parallel C++, um, which is also an open standards base and cross architecture language for heterogeneous computing. Uh, so we do our DPC++, we use the LLVM Clang uh, compiler, that's part of one API, and then we're able to send out to any vendor CPU, uh, Spur V, Intel GPUs across the whole line, NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, we can enable them. So to Embry. Embry is our high performance ray tracing library. Um, so historically we've supported x86 CPUs under Linux, Mac, and Windows. ARM CPUs under Mac OS, as well as the Intel dedicated GPUs of the Arc line, the Flex line, and our Max GPUs, which you may know better as Pana Vecchio. Um, so we do that under Linux and Windows, and Embry is released as open source under Apache 2, so very permissive. For Embry 4, Embry 4 is when we introduced our GPU support. So we added support for any of our XE GPU architectures. Um, so this gives us access to our ray tracing hardware. So we build on Sickle for the cross-platform open standard based uh, C++. In Embry, you only need that if you're gonna use GPU. So this adds the requirement of being able to use a Sickle compiler so if you're compiling for GPU, you're gonna to wanna to use the Sickle compiler. For this then simplifies your API though. The same API calls you're used to using on Embry on CPU already, we did our very best to try and keep those as close to possible as what you're used to on Embry 3, while gaining the speed of being able to render on GPU. So again, we wanted to keep the porting easy for you. We cared about design. Um, 
being rendering, you know, you may have to adjust your renderer or your workload to be designed well to parallelize on a GPU. Um, but at least on Embry, we tried to keep that simple for you. Uh, just a word of caution, you may need to do some design changes to go from CPU. Um, then our code changes for the Sickle APIs, a little bit of a preview. Um, you're gonna use new Sickle device to be able to use the DPC++ and Sickle. Uh, we enabled USM allocation so that you can share data with Embry. And we use Sickle parallel fours to spawn the device side code. And we use DPC++ compiler to compile the Sickle code. Again, that's for if you wanna enable GPU support. Uh, sampling of performance data. Um, so we noticed a significant speed up on CPU versus GPU. Uh, for this bar chart here, we're comparing an ARC A750 GPU, which is actually kind of the middle line, it's not the highest, versus an Intel Core i9 12900K CPU. And so the same scenes, we used a crown scene, breakfast, San Miguel, and a hairball test scene. So we saw up to 30X comparing the CPU version versus the GPU version. Next up, open image to noise. Now, open image to noise is a little farther along on our port. So really living the mission of one API, cross architecture, cross vendor, so this is our denoising library. It's mostly aimed at ray tracing images, um, those rendered with Monte Carlo path tracing, um, so your, your typical Monte Carlo noise. Uh, we focus on quality first. So we haven't tuned it to be the fastest denoiser, but we want it to be highest quality for your final frame renders. So this is suitable for interactive and offline rendering. Um, so it's nice for your interactive viewports and then you can go to your offline rendering and get the same results. Uh, it's got a simple C and C++ API. Again, sticking with what you saw in the original Open Image Denoise 1.0 as close as we could. Um, this should leave you easy integration. Um, most people that were trying to upgrade to this version for GPU were able to do it in a day. And again, like all of our libraries, it's open source under Apache 2. So we kept our image quality and the features. Um, we're getting real time interactive performance of about 10 to 20 milliseconds per uh, 1920 by 1080 frames um, on a mid to high end desktop GPU. Uh, minimal changes to your code and also interoperability with graphics APIs, your DirectX 12, your Vulkan, um, and we're gonna have even more efficient support coming up next for texture interrupt. Coming soon. <laughs> so, we're cross-vendor. Um, for Intel on our GPUs, uh, we're using Sickle. Uh, we have CUDA support for our uh, NVIDIA GPUs through Cutlass. Uh, we're using HIP, thanks to our friends at AMD. They helped us out with our HIP questions and uh, timing on releases. And also coming soon, we'll have Metal support. Apple's actually sent us a patch, thank you Apache 2. And uh, we're working on doing the integration of that so we can ship you metal support as well. So how this works is we have an existing buffer object API for your vendor agnostic memory allocation. Um, again, same code path to be able to do your CPU or GPU denoising. Uh, we have user allocated unified memory pointers that you can use importing external buffers from graphics APIs, textures coming soon. Um, interoperability with your GPU compute APIs across Sickle, CUDA, and HIP, and asynchronous filter execution on GPU. So to learn more, please check out openimagedenoise.org or embry.org or chronos.org slash sickle if you want to see how you too can do a GPU port like this and be cross vendor across architecture. And again, I have a question for you, please. Uh, given that we're very open source with an Apache 2 license, we don't always know where our code ends up. 
Um, we'd love to hear about your projects, how you're using our code. It helps us to also gauge resourcing so we can make sure we have enough people helping you out. Um, and just to get the team excited. So if you're using Embry, Open Image Geoys, any of our libraries, please shoot me an email or I'm the animator on most social media channels. Pick your flavor and thank you very much.